Flood insurance in Florida, an important topic, particularly after Hurricane Debbie just hit. I'm with... Brooke Dollison, Blue Circle Insurance. And we're going to talk all things flood insurance, a really, yeah. really hot topic in today's world as we kind of get through the end of summer 2024. Brooke, you're the boss when it comes to insurance. Not Correct. So, by the way, he doesn't just sell flood insurance. What is, what is your... Uh, company encompass so so that yep. the people of YouTube know sure all personal lines so home auto motorcycles umbrellas uh, pet insurance as well uh, speaking of I'm oh, paying one now you might see Sophie here yeah she the... will oh, make she an is. appearance sooner than later there she um, is she's not gonna leave us alone <laughs> so um, yeah we do all personal lines um, we do some small commercial and then we also work with some other brokers for some of the larger commercial okay so, yeah. well and you know the reason we decided to talk flood specifically today is because uh, if you've read the headlines or talked to owners or your neighbors here you've personally experienced some flooding here post Hurricane Debbie. Um, it's one that it's a topic that I feel like is really important and, and for, especially for those that are maybe not in a flood zone or those that maybe decide to self-insure, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I know usually I have the checklist. So mm -hmm. Brooke's got the checklist today. Where do you want to begin? What, what um, would be the most important thing? So the, the one thing I get the most, um, and I've done some I should not no speaking tours, but I've asked you know larger audiences before. Mm -hmm. Who here is not in a flood zone? And I love it's just the it's a layup for me because they'll raise and so just to, I'll cut to the chase. Everyone is in a flood zone in Florida. That, Every that's property. what I started saying. Yep. Yes. So there's no anyone who says, "Oh, I'm not in a flood zone." The other thing is people take a, a short term view of things, so they're like. Well, we had this hurricane and I wasn't affected, so I don't need it. Or uh, sometimes, actually, people take the long term. So I have a, a, a very, I'll make it short, but whoop, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> sometimes she has um, teeth. Yes, yeah, so we have a client who's lived in the same house for 40 plus years, mm -hmm. right on Bay of Vista. Never had any need for flood insurance. Um, Sarasota, County, Sarasota County actually remapped the flood zone um, to an A. It went from X to A, and I'll tackle that here okay. in a little bit. But um, her lender required her to carry flood. Right. So we bought it a week. It was whatever. It was August 4th was the big tropical storm slash hurricane slash a ton of rain. <laughs> um, and she got it a week before. Um, she, she was against it. She was like, this okay. is ridiculous, blah, blah. Got it. I get the call Monday, August 5th that she's has what, three, four inches of rain. Yeah. Okay. Let's pause right there because this is really important. So she bound it or she paid for it or she got it the week before. Did she actually have it and did it take She a had bet? it. Yep. She had okay. it. It was okay. paid for. Um, okay. So yeah, there are some waiting periods. So the reason we were able to get hers was um, there was a remap. So um, NFIP. So there's two types of policies. Okay. I'll break it down there. Okay. So there's private flood and then there's... Um, FEMA backed flood or NFIP, which is National Flood Insurance Program. Okay. I'll try to just say that once today. <laughs> um, typically, the um, um, FEMA backed or the NFIP flood has a 30 day waiting period unless it's lender required, which would mean you're in an A or a B zone. Okay. Or they just instituted this change here recently where if the property is remapped, basically have, I think it's either 12 or 13 months, you have a one day waiting period. Okay. So I had another client who had the same, literally it was like Thank Thursday God. or Friday, one day waiting period, it went into force Saturday, and then I think he had flood damage Sunday. What, what, was that one client that, that bound insurance, was she like loving all you people because not, I mean, I mean not for the right reason maybe, but thankful, I'm yes. sure she's thankful. Th super thankful. Um, she was in the hospital, it was a whole, oh. she had other stuff going on. Um, wow. But yeah, I mean, she otherwise, her home, no protection, um, FEMA is there to help however those are typically loans so that's the one thing that gets people are like oh well female will bail me out maybe and sometimes you know they will assign some money to help right. with those some grants but a lot of times it's just a loan that you end up paying back so i have a facebook friend i've been watching her story through this whole process and she's sort of been like memorializing you know from soup to nuts like the the experience she's had and through that process, I learned, I've learned a lot of things because she's had to go through it like the hard way. And so she's educating us through social media. 
And she was saying the FEMA allows up to 42,000. Is that? I don't know the exact thing? amount. Okay. I, yeah, I couldn't tell you the exact amount. So FEMA, if, if they determine that you have a certain amount of damage, let's just say it's up to 42,000, is that FEMA money? Is that all alone, or is it sometimes alone and sometimes? So that's like a little confusing. To yeah, me. and oh, it's never so. It's never clear on how they're going to decide what is a loan. Or Government. We where, are. One's a loan. I know. <laughs> would have thought there's so much red tape. So sometimes <laughs> it's a loan. Sometimes it's a grant. I have never been able to figure out what constitutes what, like how they decide. And you're the insurance guy. Yeah, all, we don't get involved in the, the well claim denial part. Okay. Um, so something it's... else to keep in mind. Sorry. Uh, but um, which we've dealt with a lot is a lot of people um, I think I saw it was 75% of the flood claims that we had in this area were not in a special hazard flood zones so they're uh, X there was zone X exactly so um, three-fourths of the claims were there how they get help from FEMA is they actually have to file a claim um, okay. so thankfully so there's it can be bad so it means you have to file a claim to get a denial letter because they require a denial letter right. from your insurance company. Everyone, I shouldn't say everyone knows, but it's fairly common knowledge that flood is not covered by the homeowners. It's on your declarations, it'll say right. flood is not covered. That is pretty common knowledge. Yep. But FEMA but. does not, uh, they won't accept that. So you actually have to go through the process of to get filing denied. a claim. Yep. Okay. And so then that's on your record for five years. Thankfully, this was a hurricane. So um, that's why I'm familiar with it being a hurricane, just because we're actually, we've had right. to file claims as hurricane claims, get denial letters. Um, but if it wasn't a hurricane, if it was just excess rain, now they're filing a water damage claim. It's, short story is get flood insurance um, to so, protect yourself. Okay, let's dive into what you just said there. So flood versus water damage, mm -hmm. what is the, are they? So, yeah, there's different definitions. So flood has a definition and this kind of goes into the, so there's the NFIP and the private. So NFIP defines a flood as um, two acres are inundated with water. Sorry, there's a okay. in that here. Um, or uh, two adjoining properties have to have physical damage, right? So it can't just be like- You're just um, a one man show over here. Right, so if you live by yourself, well, I guess it depends on the, if, if the acreage one would, would um, count. Right. Um, but that's with NFIP with a lot of private flood and it's not every carrier, unfortunately. So with private, there you have they all have different rules. Sophie's very needy. She's very needy. But um, that's okay. Not distracting at all. But that's okay. Um, She's the manager of Blue Circle Insurance. Yes. By the way, yep. I'm, I'm off of Whitfield and University. Yep. Okay. Get um, to that. <laughs> so with the private flood, they are less restrictive. So they have to at least abide by the NFIP rules. However, they can make it easier to file a claim. So like private flood, generally speaking, it just has to affect your property. You just have to have flood damage. And there's okay. different things that cause a flood. Um, so what we had was excess rainwater, um, but it could be um, like a big main pipe breaking, breaking. bursting, um, just backup, water backup. So, so if someone has like a roof leak and it's water inside your house, that's just your not homeowners. Flooding. Right. That's not flooding. Okay, water has to actually flood. Rising water is the Rising biggest water. one. Yeah. External, right. So like if it's just whatever you leave the tub on and the, rock, the waters are rising in the home it's still not that yeah that's not flood. that's not that's from being not so smart yep. that's not a flood <laughs> um yeah i really feel for these people that were in x never ever in a million years or 500 years or the 100 year flood yeah. rule or whatever thought that your house would flood i mean it's scary like to see i mean feet of water in your house and some of it this was so debbie in particular was caused by some of the levees breaking too mm -hmm. and that so is that an issue at all with regard to getting money from your flood insurance no no like, it's still it's any water okay. right doesn't have to be a storm or a name storm or no it's just right oh, it's okay. excess um okay. typically it's rainwater because how else are you going to get it but it could right. be a storm surge it could be it could be sewage water could be i think it was it in some awful. cases yeah Ugh. so um Another difference, and, and we can tackle different things, but another difference between the, maybe I can save some of this for the end, but yeah. private versus um, NFIP. So NFIP does not include loss of use. Okay. So all those people who, I mean, especially if it's sewage water, right? You can't use your house. So you have right. to stay somewhere else. So that's where the loss of use comes loss in. Loss of use comes in. Payment of a private. hotel or a place to stay or Airbnb. Yep. Exactly. So it can get, 
it can get expense, expensive, it can get um, just super inconvenient, you know, hotels are I mean, they have, so, and then they have, when you compare flood to regular homeowner's insurance, do you have loss of use in that? Homeowners, you have loss of use, but right. it's not a covered claim or a covered peril, so okay. they're not the loss of use on their homeowners is not going to kick in. So that's why. And again, there's right. sometimes there's reasons to go private versus NFIP, different reasons. Um, hmm. But I do try to educate people every time, like, hey, this one does have. Uh, typically, when I send out a quote, also this one includes loss of use. Right. This one does not. You know, I, from the real estate side of things, and I, I try to, like, this is really good for me to educate my clients, too. Like, I'm not always a fan of the lowest premium because everybody's, you know, obviously the cost of insurance in general has gone up. But, like, I don't recommend going with the lowest necessarily. Making yeah. sure you have proper coverage, and that's what you would go into deeper with the client. Yeah. But um, making sure that they have a history of payouts. I mean... Right. Right. So yeah. you can have insurance. Well, what good is it if they don't have a history of payouts yep. too? So that's, and typically, that's... I, I would say most agents are going to work with good carriers. Right. right? So right. Um, there's not a whole lot of those carriers that are, I'd say, have a bad reputation. But typically, they have to pay there's out. Some. There's, there's always, always. Oh, there's always. There's, yeah, there's always, always a bad some. player. Um, so after the storm, did you have a bunch of calls? After I did. That? Like an influx of calls and. Yeah, oh. I'm. I was going to resist saying it. We were Thanks. flooded. We were flooded with calls. Oh, <laughs> there I just we got go. that. Yeah. I'm slow. It's fine. I'm um, slow. But you don't it's have to bad. admit that I'm slow, but yes, um, I was flooded with calls. So yeah, it was uh, both calls from claims. Um, like I mean, we had claims that people had insurance. Yep. Obviously. There were claims where obviously they didn't have flood. Um, and then a lot of calls of like, Hey, how much is flood? And so that was a big, um, I'm, I can tell you like, Personally, I purchased the flood policy. Yeah. Had no flooding After issues. This. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was, it's one of those, you look at it, you're like, you know, your home's a big investment. It's a big asset. Usually and you the think biggest. About, and you think about flooring, cabinetry, right. appliances, rugs, furniture. I mean, that will add a hundred thousand will go Quick. like this, yep. you know, especially if you have nicer things. Um, you know, I, I mean, that just goes quickly. The drywall, the mitigation of mold, yep. potentially. Like, it's it's more than just what you're seeing. It's not like, and if there is mold, it's by cubic feet. I mean, you could go on and on with it, right? So yeah. that money will go quickly. And so that's, yeah. it's, it, for us, it was the conversation of like, you know, I, I always look at it as like, would you, there's two ways to look at it. So would I feel better? Oh, the teeth, because she's with dad. Yeah, it's fine. she's protective. <laughs> So it's it's almost like not quite FOMO, but what would I regret more? Would I regret paying the premium and never having to use it? And that's let's just say five hundred dollars that I well, wasted a year, or peace would of I regret, mind. Yes, but, peace of mind goes yeah. a long way. Yeah. Knowing like that's why we get life insurance and all those things too. Well, so. and if you are in a non-flood zone, Zone X, it will be inexpensive. Like typically under so they, six hundred dollars a year. It can be not all the time. Okay, not always. Um, so they've changed it. So it used yeah. to be, it it was. Um, boy, they changed it a couple of years ago. Um, but NFIP now utilizes a lot of the same technology that private companies use. Mm -hmm. So each risk is individually rated. Um, so they base it not necessarily on your your base flood elevation, but they base it on um, your proximity to a, um, a flood area. If that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. like, so for instance, if you live uh, in Zone X and you're surrounded by properties of Zone X, you're going to pay a lower premium than somebody who's also in Zone X, but their next door neighbor is oh. in Zone A or B. Or and that yeah, how often do they change the map? I don't, there's not a set schedule. I think they're constantly. Shockingly. I know. So they're constantly reevaluating <laughs> it um, and things change. So right. like properties erode or whatever erosion takes place. So, right. um, or sometimes with, oh, we lost a friend. Oh. Um, but sometimes, um, especially with new builds, so that can affect things. As we saw, I know a lot of fingers were pointed at were overdeveloped. Just say it who. Right. Just so place the game. <laughs> right. So that was a big, you know, it's a big deal and, and I know a lot of people, especially like I think Star Farms. Was well they didn't have like 
the proper infrastructure, the drainage or something. And so right. those might have been higher sitting elevate like baseline elevation compared to the runoff coming down to the zone X. Yeah, there was, Is that what it kinda was in addition to the levees and Yeah, there was that one area, I don't remember the neighborhood, but there was one where it was just everything just kind of trickled down and they were just from sitting artistry. There. Um, there's there's definitely standing water and artistry which is crazy because i had just sold a brand new house to some really good clients friends of mine and i was like can you imagine buying a brand new house and then you right. just have day one damage but like that especially new construction you'd think oh i'm at you know oh, everything's at, right no and not perfect out, yeah. yeah so life well, finds a way well what else you got on the priority list um i talked about the did i mention the waiting period i think i did so 30 Briefly. days for nfip um if you're not uh, in an a or a v zone mm -hmm. um if you're in zone x um sorry you're still gonna have the 30 days if you're nfip okay. if you're private it's anywhere from zero to maybe 15 days i like zero zero is great i like to uh, I'm paying for it. I want it now. But yeah, you understand that there's rules and regulations. Coverage limits are higher. So somebody in uh, a larger home, <laughs> Sophie agrees. Sophie so definitely agrees. NFIP typically goes up to 250000 on the dwelling. Okay. 100000 on contents. You can mm -hmm. get excess flood. It's typically more expensive when you do that. It's a second policy that you're mm -hmm. stacking on top. Um, private goes as usually as high as $4 million. Um, Different companies have different limits. But $4 million on the home. I think it's 500000 on the contents. Okay. Deductible wise, um, maybe not the hugest concern, but um, NFIP, you're gonna have two deductibles, one for dwelling, one for contents, okay. private flood. And it's not everyone, but most of the time you're gonna have one deductible. So it's just what less out a, of pocket. What is a typical deductible for flood? So NFIP, I tend to go like a thousand or 1250, oh, maybe 2000. Um, you, that's better than a hundred thousand. Yeah, especially, yeah, yeah. So that's oh, what you have to, it's just, just looking at that. Um, rating factors, something that people should keep in mind. Um, so type of construction is now, so like masonry uh, is typically gonna be cheaper, yeah, less expensive than a frame construction home. That makes sense with general insurance. Yep, right? and it also applies to flood now. Okay. Um, oh. Another thing that, and trust me, I've done so many like zoom ins on Google Maps. <gasps> zoomies? Zoom, so many zoomies. Sophie also does zoomies. <laughs> We're good um, friends. Him and his wife and I are good friends, and we yes. we send each other dog photos. So we zoom pretty in. much. That's what we call zoomies. Okay, we zoomies. Every hour on the hour. We zoomies yeah. on the flood insurance. Okay. So <laughs> the number of steps leading to the front door. Mm -hmm. This is one that steps. Yep. So like steps. What are steps? Oh, I uh, I'm from the south, so yeah, step. Pete. Steps. Steps. This is great. I this thought is... this is a new acronym you have. It's <laughs> no. NFIP, SAIP. Go. I'm just not good at English. Steps. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> steps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, for instance, not everyone, but most people have a little ledge. Okay. Right? That's considered a step. A My step. Segment, a step. Yeah. A step. We'll work through that. Um, <laughs> I'm working on it. So, the. Okay. So, that's. I, I'm thinking it's better to have a step. Or yeah, it's two better. So the you're more, more you have, elevated. Yep. Okay. Some okay. will go as. Um, you, it depends on the carrier. Uh, the carrier, but like three, um, is gonna typically be cheaper than if you had one. Oh, breath. It says manager on her. It does. Thing. And she's. She's the boss here. Taking it to heart. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, NFIP policy. So one thing to keep in mind: NFIP, you buy it you're keeping it for the year. So there's none of like, and hopefully somebody's not doing this. So like you buy it during rainy season, right? Okay. Oh, I think I'll buy my policy in May or June, right? Um, you're getting oh, a microphone. The mic. That's what that is, okay. We need your dad to talk. Okay. Yeah, so um, you buy it, you have to keep it for the year. You can't just keep it during hurricane season, right? Yeah, and then drop it and then- Right. What if people want to, okay. So you, the only way to cancel it is sell the home, or if there's a total loss, then you can cancel it. Okay, do you have, you know, there's always, like, the cuckoo birds in the group. Do you have people that want to buy it just for, like, hurricane season and then cancel, and then buy and then cancel? Do you have those people like that? Yeah, we weed them out, so it's <laughs> not, well, you can't do it. That's the thing with NFIP, I, you just can't do it. I expect to hear stories when that comes about. Oh, yeah. No, it's just, yeah, you'll but, hear some stories and yeah. some yelling. Um, and some yelling, yeah. I would, yeah. Um... I, I would say that was the majority of the flood that I wanted to cover. There was, okay. oh, sorry, there was some other things. So, like, um, pool repair and pool refill. Oh, is so that like, covered? 
private flood, it can be. Okay. Not everyone, but okay. a lot of times it's an endorsement that's available. Because if there's flooding, that's still not covering your homeowners. Right. So separate. So your okay. pool could just be filled with whatever, um, and you have to drain it, and that can be expensive. So. I'm shocking. I'm oh, right. Um, morning breath. Do you need to brush your teeth, Sophie? It wouldn't hurt. Yeah, okay. Um, and so, yeah, I would say that's, I mean, if people have more flood questions, obviously they're welcome to ask. Right. Um, the flood quote, premium, X zone, I would say typically three to five, maybe 600, depending on deductibles. And, okay. And um, obviously how much content? Contents, you... NFIP is always actual cash value on contents. Okay. Um, private, you can endorse uh, replacement costs. Okay. So you can get more for your stuff. Okay. Um, and then one brief topic that I just want to discuss, um, it's been happening here uh, just recently. In Sarasota? Sarasota, just people, a lot of people are f moving in from other states. And don't I don't be mad man, at me. Every time. She shows her teeth. Yeah. She's just showing she's them off. She's protecting it. Oh, they're really white. She just white. went to the dentist. They're, <laughs> they're really white. <laughs> um, the other thing um, that's been happening here recently, and I don't think it's necessarily flood insurance require, uh, related, but... People buying a home, even a new, brand new home, not getting insurance, um, or maybe they're rehabilitating it or re, you know, yeah. um, remodeling it, not getting insurance, and then trying to get insurance three months later, six oh, months later. It looks nine, bad for the. It's very difficult for the rating or the whatever you call it when you yeah. rate people as far as why. Well, it's, why didn't you have insurance for a period of time? Home insurance companies don't want that. It's risky because home insurance companies are paranoid. So, right, they're saying, well, why are you doing it now? Why now? Right. So they typically just don't allow it. So when you do that, you're really limiting yourself. Um, I had a client here recently. We ended up writing them um, with a company that, whatever, we can go into that later, I guess. Okay. But <laughs> the company. Um, it wasn't so like, I'll just give an example. Yeah, I won't go into a company name. But so their premium, it was in February, I think. They bought oh. a new home. It was $800 happy client, right? Right. She just never purchased it, had other things that are mine, and I think, and maybe some, I'm Florida born and raised, so I don't know how other states work, but I've heard, uh, at least it appears that you can just get a policy whenever you want. Florida doesn't fly, right? So okay. we ended up having to write her with somebody who was $2,000. So for one, of the story. Just get it just when you buy it. get it done. Yep, work with the agent Yeah. Um, before you buy the home. Um, I have some people who call me, I don't love doing like quoting five different properties for somebody, but like Ugh. once you settle on a property, yeah. get the insurance quote and just have a relationship with that agent too. So totally. It's it doesn't have to be with me, but well, yeah. Yes, it does. I mean, it should Come be me if, me if they're smart. They'll go, I mean, if you're smart, right. it's called Brooke and Pam. Yes. Yes. Um, agreed. It's a relationship business. And again, not just going with the lowest premium, you're going, you're getting a package deal with the service that they yep. provide, the availability. Like, to me, I wouldn't take advantage of that. Like, it would be nice if, if someone is really hypersensitive. I think I, I have a couple people right now that are hypersensitive because it's right after Debbie. Mm -hmm. One um, buyer just came from another state, so they're not, as, they're not as settled into Florida. So it's, like, understandable it's on their mind. So I might call you and say, hey, for this particular house, just to put their uh, minds at ease, if they want a more specific quote, I might oh, yeah. send them over. And then based on that, they can kind of guesstimate. Can we do it. I mean, we do it all the time. Well, so, right. Yeah. And so, and I can give them rough numbers too mm -hmm. without wasting your time. Um, and generally, like lenders and inspectors, I like to give a couple different names and my top, you know, insurance people or vendors and mm -hmm. th let them choose. And people like to shop a little bit. Yeah. yeah and right? there's nothing wrong with it. You don't have to go yeah. to one carrier. I wouldn't go to five or six agents because okay. at that point, we're all just cannibalizing each other we're all okay. quoting <laughs> for the most part we're quoting the same companies okay right so if you do that um it's about who you want to work with and yeah. hopefully you have longevity with that person you're not bouncing all around i think again relationships are key with mm -hmm. this and you know securing your home or buying a home with me it's just all the same thing i think and we all work as a team really so. yes so it's and like we're very transparent with what we yeah. do so yeah. like i'm just an open book um, I'll be honest with people like, hey, like I didn't have flood insurance prior to this because right. I had no reason to, to think I would ever need it. Um, so I'll, I, I've told clients that they're like, do you have flood? I'm like, I do not. Prior to, you know, a couple well, weeks ago. Well, prior to Debbie, yeah. yeah. I mean, and you're, yeah. It, got, it gets the mind thinking. You're like, oh, do I really want to take a 
fifty hundred thousand dollar hit if something were to happen. I'm like, I'd rather just five eighty nine. You're drinking, what I paid. you're drinking your own Kool Aid, Brooke. Right. True. You I got mean, to. it's okay. Yep. I get it. Um, so yeah, that was all I okay. had. I don't think there all was right. anything else. Um, I'm sure there's questions from people. I mean, and yep. I definitely want them to reach out to you. So how do the people reach out to you? Our telephone number is 941-371-6337. The website, bluecircleins.com. I don't have any hashtags, but search. No hashtags. You're on on Insta. I'm on Insta. Oh, our Instagram page is a little rough. Him and Pam are on Instagram. Yep. Search them out. Pam Um, and Brooke Dolison. Google me, as Shrek would say. Yeah. Yeah. And Google reviews. Check out the the Google reviews. Great reviews. Yeah. Hear it from the source, the people. Um, service matters, communication matters, you know, everybody wants stuff now. And especially from my side, you know, after we get through inspection, we want to get them really tackled into and solidify their insurance, figure out where they, you know, who they want to work with. And mm-hmm. so it's a big part of the big picture here. So again, we all work together on the benefit for the benefit of the buyer or yes. the owner in this case. So, um, and I could be reached at 941-544-7690. And if you're a potential seller or a buyer, I want to hear from you. Please email me too. It's shaylatwit at gmail.com.